Should we rent or should we buy in the villages? We're going to answer that question coming up next. So to give you a little background about us, by 2019, we were already downsized and lived in a three bedroom apartment. David retired during COVID. I was working part time and we had no grandchildren at the time but that since has changed. We'd already downsized out of our house and rent was going up in the apartment we were renting. And we had a, a time where we could decide, do we want to stay where we currently were at or are we going to move to a different apartment? Or really we could have moved anywhere in the country to experience something new. Now interest rates were low. So we thought maybe now's the time to buy and we had no house to sell. Winters were really cold in Ohio. Good time to think about moving. So we decided to try living in Florida and we called it the Florida Experiment. So why did we choose the villages? So we started watching some YouTubers that lived in the villages and it made us familiar with the surroundings and the things to do and kind of gave us a comfort level that it would be an area you'd want to live in as opposed to just vacation in. And we did see that all the town squares had music, live music, which we loved to dance, 365 days in the year. So that was one draw. We also have e-bikes. Yeah, and I thought, uh, you know, for our first experience living in Florida, it had a nice central location. So we could be to the, be to the east coast or the west coast beaches in an hour and a half. We were near the springs, the other things around Disney. We thought there'd be plenty of things to do outside of the villages as well. Oh, we were also close to the cruise ports because uh, we like to go on a cruise now and then. We decided to do the lifestyle visit. During the lifestyle visit, we came just a short period of time before Thanksgiving. We were here for about four days. Really wasn't long enough, but we got a chance to see the development at the time. Richmond was the area that uh, the new homes were being built in. Uh, we got a chance to look at those. And the nice thing too about the lifestyle visit is they provide you with a golf cart, you get two bikes, and uh, so you can go out on your own. The sales people, the sales consultant wasn't pressuring us to buy anything right away. And, uh, you know, it gives you a chance to really experience the villages. And at the time, Richmond had about 30 homes left. They were basically sold out. They were going to have some villas up for sale as well. So there was a, an opportunity to buy. So doubts started to creep in our minds. And we were like, will we really like it here? Yeah, I was like concerned about it getting really hot in July and August. So I, uh, you know, I just wanted to experience that to see what that would be like. And also we're gonna be a long ways away from our friends, our children. Uh, I'd never lived outside of Ohio for any long period of time. So well, that's something to think about. So the homes were really close together in Richmond. Yeah. And I, I just wasn't sure if that would be for me. But the low interest rate was there, but the high prices on the homes were also up. Yeah, for houses that have small lots and no basement, um, you know, it just was something for us to think about. You, in retirement, you probably don't want a lot of maintenance type issues and taking care of big yards, but we weren't used to that. So there's also the bond to consider, which brought the, the cost up. And we just couldn't decide. Um, I wanted to be in between the sixes 
and try to look at some pre-owned homes. And David kind of liked Richmond, but it just, we didn't have enough time. It, we needed more time to decide. So where is between the sixes? Between the 466A and 466. <laughs> okay. So if you didn't know, <laughs> more of a central location than down in the southern area where the new home construction primarily was, right? Right. Okay. So we basically just didn't drink the Kool-Aid. Not yet. So from there, we thought the perfect situation would be rent for six months. Rent a furnished house with a golf cart provided. Come down and spend some time, get familiar with it. Don't move a bunch of stuff down here yet. Just put it in storage up in Ohio and come down and experience the villages. Make sure that this is a, a good move. But we thought, let's, let's just do this six months. Just six months. Yeah. But the problem was, this wasn't easy to find. Now, you know, time of year we were looking was like right around December. And the most active time here for people is obviously when it's cold up north. So people jump on those rentals ahead of time. Or they come back year after year for December, January, February, March, some, some, uh, some group of those months. So there wasn't a lot available. And what was available were only like two months, but it was 4,000, 5,000 for a home. It was really high and there were no golf carts included. So there was no time left and we went back to Columbus and rethought this and decided we can't find anything for six months, let's just go all in and we will rent for a year. Yeah, once we made the decision to rent, uh, kind of made it, we made, became more flexible to find a way for that to happen. Because uh, it was getting near the end of our lease in uh, Ohio. So we had to make a decision. So we began our search. And basically what we found were a lot of homes were between $1,500 and $2,300 for a year lease. Um, and there were three sources that we used. First was um, corporate owned homes and it was hard to communicate with them and they had really long complicated yeah. leases. Yeah, not very tenant friendly leases is what our experience was. So, and you try to negotiate them and you know, you're just hitting brick walls where they didn't want to make any changes. They had a lot of fees and penalties and they even wanted to charge for power washing after your, your lease yeah. ends. Yeah. Now, the second pl uh, the second way is individual owners and they were kind of hard to get a hold of. We played a lot of phone tag and they're not realtors so um, their leases were not um, Florida state statue friendly. Um, they were very restrictive too because it seemed like they were more VRBO leases. Um, no parties, because we were gonna have a lot of parties. We are gonna have a lot of parties. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even want you to have anybody staying over at your house. No visitors. No visitors, which well, that was, you know, all the leases are different, but that was some of the things we started running into. Well, we were looking for a year lease. So we went to property management companies and this is where we found privately owned homes, but they were professionally managed and they were willing to send us sample leases, uh, willing to negotiate certain terms. So after about six weeks, we found it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our tips for finding a place to rent in the villages, especially if you're thinking, you know, six months instead of a year. First of all, don't start looking in December for something that uh, your rental would start in February, per se. It's just a lot harder. And there's fewer choices and there's fewer price uh, categories for you to choose a house from. So if you can, if you're thinking about moving in January or February, 
you know, maybe you want to be looking at the beginning of the summer before that January or February. Now, if you're here in the villages, one of the best places to find a rental is if you go to the pools, a neighborhood pool, most of the people live in that neighborhood. You strike up a conversation, we heard about rental after rental, but yeah. we had already moved here. So that's one source. And also if you're driving around neighborhoods when you're here, you'd be looking for signs that are on the garage doors and in the windows. There aren't yard signs in the yards because those are prohibited. Um, yeah, at least for rentals or for houses for sale. Right. Yeah. So if you're not here in the villages and you're looking online like we did, first, you know, start with emailing some of the people that actually have short terms, short term leases available and ask them if they'll go long term. They might be willing to at a certain time of year if they haven't rented out, they might be willing to change and start a one year lease with someone. A lot of these people will ask for credit checks, which will cost you money. Uh, just be aware of that. Um, one thing we found is if you could get somebody to send you uh, their standard lease, not filled out or anything, but just so you can review the lease, just to see if it's something you can live with. And maybe ask to see if they're open to changes. Uh, if they tell you they're not going to make any changes and they send you a very landlord-sided lease, that may not be the place you want to continue to pursue. And go to the auditor site and check out the street and the house number that they gave you. Um, you can see the aerial views, you can get dimensions and know how large the rooms are. Um, and ask them if the photo is current on the listing when right. you see it on some of these websites. And we'll give you a list of those. We have some resources at the end of this video. Yeah, and one thing too is, you know, some people think if you see a golf cart in the photo, that means it's included. And I would say probably a lot of the times that is true, but I wouldn't assume that because we've noticed people don't update their pictures. Uh, for example, you might see a house that's full of furniture and there isn't any furniture included, or there might be a golf cart sitting in the driveway, and for whatever reason, they've decided not to rent out. Uh, include a golf cart in a house rental. So ask lots of questions, don't assume anything. And always confirm everything in writing. We hope this video has helped you if you're planning on renting or buying in the villages. Look for our next video where we'll talk about the pros and cons of renting and give you some negotiating tips. Click the thumbs up button to let us know you like this video. Leave a comment or question below and share this video with a friend. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, click our logo right here. Watch this video next. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the flip side.